There you go. Go, big go! Let's do this. Hey everybody, uh, so it's Father's Day. Um, we were, well, I've had a lot of people ask about brisket, so I just decided for fun, yeah, I mean, I know it's not trucks or anything, but I'd throw up a quick brisket video because I, I did a brisket last night. Um, and then kind of give updates on some of the projects uh, I've got going on. Um, mostly just the ones out here normally actually normally this time of year we'd be back in wisconsin working on the farm but because of covid uh we haven't been back um so derek's been back there working on the tractor and stuff and uh pulling some trailers out and, and uh the rest of that stuff i mean kind of we didn't we didn't do much with this year uh we're, ho we're hoping to go back pretty soon but i'm gonna throw some parts of that in the video uh so today um I mean, again, just just for fun, just just brisket and updates on projects. Uh, hopefully, you guys are having a good time. Take it easy. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I mean, I don't, I don't know if anybody's gonna watch this or not, but I might not be good at much, but I can cook a brisket. Uh, so for the rest of that, uh, stay tuned, stay out of trouble, have fun, and uh, enjoy. Uh, First, let's get going on brisket. Then we'll throw in some projects. Uh, then we'll probably throw some some flyovers and some of the stuff we got going on on the farm. So, make it just a quick ride for fun. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. Prime. All right. So, just a couple quick things. When I choose a brisket, and listen, I'm just telling you guys my way. There's a lot of ways. This is just my way. Uh, I look for one that's a little bit thicker. Some of these get a little thinner. Um, try to look for one that's sort of easy on the fat, that's a reasonable size. And a big part of that's because uh, I have a smaller smoker. But anyways, so let's get this bad boy opened up and figure it out. All right, a couple things with the brisket. Uh, I forgot what I was gonna say. Okay, listen guys, there's a lot of ways of cooking a brisket. Uh, we had several people ask about it in another video, so I promised I'd do a little section of the brisket because I mean, I showed it. And we decided to do a brisket for my father for Father's Day. Brisket was the request. And since I was doing one, I thought I would uh, whack out a video. I know it's normally trucks and farming. We occasionally do some cooking. That's against uh, best practices, I think, for YouTube. But uh, I don't really, you know, if you guys are curious, check this out. This is just for fun. I will throughout the video, if you're just interested in the brisket and you don't want the updates on the projects, uh, I will post what time in the video the next, the next brisket update is. But, let's go back to the meat here. So, for trimming, you know, very first thing is, I like to start just kinda feeling around and finding these parts of the fat cap. And I know that people, talk about doing a measurement or what have you. Um, this is just me personally. I just like to find the thicker parts of the fat and kind of work it off. I don't want it all gone, but I do want this to be uh, enjoyable and edible 
for most people. And But I do like to take uh, as much of this, like, do you see this kind of like connective, silver skinny connective tissue? You can kind of see it like right here, you know, this fold. I like to just find the end of that, sort of get it started, and then like walk that thing the whole length of the brisket. It's totally up to you how far you want to take it down. Um, I'm taking this one down a little bit further than sometimes I do because it's got a lot of this like silver skin connective tissue on it. I like to kind of just trim up the edges of all this, make the brisket nice and square. Uh, you don't want to lose too much, but at the same time you don't want you don't want, I mean, that's just, you don't want too much hanging around. You don't have to be too crazy about this because a lot of this will break down in the cooking process, you know? I'm gonna just take this little corner of the cap off. I know some people like to square them up a lot more. Um, I do like to square them up, but I don't want them, I don't want them too perfect. Uh, on this side, again, same thing. Just obvious pieces of the silver skin you want to take off. We're gonna get some salt off there. You're gonna ask the question, how many answers you can do too much? You want it coated. That's done. We are just gonna kind of lightly cover this, and I do mean lightly cover. We're not trying to like conceal it or wrap it. We're just kind of keeping the dust off of it. Uh, 12 to 24 hours in the fridge, and I will see you guys super early in the morning. We're gonna put this bad boy in the smoker. Hey guys, I thought kind of for fun I'd just run through some of the projects I have going on. Where I'm at with them, give you a little backstory on them. Uh, this is, is obviously the classic Opel GT. Um, I actually have a couple of these. The history with this car, not this particular car, but the Opel GT, is kind of funny. When I was a kid growing up, uh, <laughs> my mom saw the Opel GT at the Buick dealership, and I think it was like $1,500 back then. Uh, so she bought it and she used to drive in from the country uh, to Wisconsin, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. She drove like a, just like a stabbed rat. Uh, that was the only speed she knew. It's a miracle we were never killed. Um, so we kind of grew up, we, we kind of grew up thinking this was, this was the fastest car that ever lived, you know, when you're a little kid. Uh, the ironic part of that <laughs> Is you know where you got to, you're winding down these little windy country roads in, in farm country in Wisconsin, and one day my mom comes by my dad, whew, the other way, and dad said that's the end of that thing. Us kids were riding in the little boot in the back, and my my older sister was sitting in the passenger seat. So this thing got kicked out to the pasture on the farm, and there it sat for years. Uh, and then my uncle got college age and he was down at the farm one day and saw it sitting there and said hey if I can get that running can I drive it I mean literally when I mean the middle of the pasture I mean like the cows had been feeding around it it just sat there in a, in a stack of cow poop um so you know my parents said, yeah I mean if you can get it running you can use it for your college car 
Uh, so he got it running. Uh, this is when I was a little kid. It was my, my first, like, kind of car mechanical experience. Other than that, we'd only, like, worked on dirt bikes and things. The funny story about that is uh, this thing almost killed him. <laughs> so he was running in from the farm one night, and as these things are wont to do, it got light on him and left the road at over 100 miles an hour. And he took a stump with my cousin Bobby in it right underneath the driver's door, gutted the whole bottom of the car out and bent the thing sideways like a taco. And neither one of them was hurt. Granted, they went through like a hundred some yards of corn that probably slowed them down. But uh, that was the end of the family Opal GT and the whole time I was growing up, you know, I, I still always thought that was the greatest car. So, so when I got older, I had an opportunity to buy one. I bought one. And then I, I came across the parts car and uh, so where this thing is at, runs, drives, um, it's got a little vacuum leak on the carburetor, and I got the stiffer suspension, uh, the sport rear suspension, and a bunch of other, just, I got a whole pile of parts over there on deck to go on it, um, for basically some rainy day this winter when I decide to throw this thing up in the air and, and just focus on Opal GT. I don't drive it a lot, um, if I'm, I'm... If I'm 100% honest, uh, the kids like to ride in it and we just go up and down the road. Uh, if you get in a wreck in this thing, when they take it to the junkyard, you'll probably still be in it. Because uh, there ain't nothing to these cars. I mean, a minor finder, uh, like a minor fender bender, most likely be fatal. Um, this car, the front of this car, uh, actually belongs to the other Opal GT down in the barn. Uh, the front of this car had a crunch in it, so. Uh, they were cut in half and married. So this is part 69, part 71. Runs and drives. Oh, I love you, buddy. All right, guys. So this is just me. Um, as you can see, I have a smaller smoker. So I have to cut the brisket in half, which I know is just a sin. Um, I don't mind doing it though because I end up with a thicker piece and a thinner piece so sometimes one obviously gets done before the other so for us one goes to the, to the table and one goes right to eating These are going to be spectacular. All right, we're off to the smoker. So I just kind of forget to cover this real quick, but uh, just to answer the question, I have a kind of a, a radiant heat style smoker. So I usually put the fat side down to protect the meat a little bit. The fat's gonna juice off, but uh, personal preference, now you know. That dog is just intently staring at this brisket. So load it up, put the metal spacers in between. That should be enough to let it go for a couple hours. There's the other one. And then let's uh, let's get to smoking, party people. It's already heating up. Oh, it smells so good just opening the smoker. Oof. Uh, so. We are gonna start the smoke, brisk it in. I preheat the smoker a little bit, that's just me. Um, it's kind of have a radiant heat that's gonna travel from the bottom to the top, so I like to put the thicker piece on the bottom. You guys can't see it, but that looks just gorgeous already this morning. Uh, we're gonna let that start to smoke give it about maybe a half hour and then start spraying it with apple juice and vinegar um, I'm always shooting for for 225 I want 225 for two to three hours of smoke and then I turn the smoke off 
and uh, we'll catch up with it after that. All right, cheers. So, uh, this here is the RRV. Uh, we got this. Whew, I think we got this probably 10 years ago. Uh, its purpose was running back and forth between uh, Jill's, Jill's parents' farm in Minnesota, our farm in Wisconsin, and then back out here to Seattle. Uh, so we were looking for something that was basically a heavy highway chassis that could do the miles. Um, we call it Black Betty because it's black hearted. Uh, and by that I mean mean spirited. Um, quite frankly, I love it. I've spun wrenches on this thing forever. Uh, I, if you probably saw in one of the videos, and I'll, I'll throw some of it in here too, but uh, me and Joe went and spent a week, put a bigger turbo on it, uh, bigger blower, bigger injectors, uh, beat the gusts out of the exhaust. Actually, I think I have a video, I'll link to it in the description, but I have a video of Joe, he actually took an air tank and, and made a resonator out of it. So this thing sounds wicked cool. Um, but we had to kind of beef it up because uh, to be an RV, they, they tuned that 6V92 down to about 300 some horsepower and this thing weighs every bit of 36,000 pounds. It's all steel chassis uh, All steel Substructure so between here in Wisconsin every time you pull a mountain pass you're doing it at 30 um, Kind of the funny thing about this is is the first time we took it back. We weren't really thinking about the road salt back there and uh, You can't see it, but everything everything from from this line down between the front and the wheel tires and then and I'll see if I'll, I'll link to a picture right now um everything from there down has has Completely been rebuilt uh, Because she dropped her guts all over the driveway one day when we were filling the water tanks so Kind of cool, but uh, anyways on to the next one So been about Been about a half hour We're getting there We're getting a little little smoke going. We're just gonna give this a a wee bit of a spritz and get this door closed right back up. All right, boys and girls, we're coming in right at that tree hour mark. Our temperature's, yeah, 240. It's a little bit higher than I would like. I would say that brisket looks gorgeous. Our internal temps are in the 150s so I'm gonna show you a little a little close-up of this monster but, oh, oh yeah so I just do half apple cider half vinegar I actually do half apple cider half apple cider vinegar Sorry. so we are super close to, to wrapping that we're Usually 160, 165, and then just, you can turn the smoke off and you can just let it roll. Um, oh, I was gonna tell you, you guys might not have seen this, but I, I use these metal rings, um, and I put like briquette metal ring, briquette metal ring, you can, you can get these on ta Amazon. Um, the reason I do that is, is just because like I like a nice like medium smoke. Um, right now I'm I'm doing uh, maple, but uh, I found that especially some of the woods that smoke a lot heavier, 
it really they just put like such a thick smoke in there it's it's just almost too much um but again personal preference this thing's smoking up beautifully right now so uh no complaints on that front and we will check in with you here in a wee bit all right it's getting good looking good looking yeah so this this will just be kind of a funny note for you guys that there can am is an electric can am um there's a couple reasons i got an electric one the the biggest one being the uh <laughs> Quite frankly, the noise scared the kids when they were little and they wouldn't ride in it because the other one was so loud. Uh, the second reason is I was a machine gunner in the Marine Corps and I got no ears left. So I certainly don't need like wah, exhaust tearing me up or anything. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of funny. We just through the farm, don't make any noise, kind of fun. Uh, but again, it's not big motors, it's not big diesels. It's not really our thing, but I am actually <laughs> I bought some Nissan Leaf batteries, and when these batteries die, which they're getting marginal, I'm actually going to throw Nissan Leaf batteries in it. All right. Uh, as you can see, probably by the windshield there, the, the previous owner had a rough time of it. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not much to say about this, dude. All right, that's not true. Um, so this cat was a donor vehicle for our F-250. Uh, and I, the only reason it's still sitting here is I just haven't had a chance to get it hauled off, but I, I kept it because I want the motor for another project. It runs and drives, and I know people are gonna say nobody tears up a perfectly good pickup. Um, I jumped on Craigslist and I found running F-150 for 500 bucks. I was gonna spend more than that on like the door panels, so I just bought the whole truck and uh, I ain't got no problem cutting it up. So, uh, as far as the windshield, that was just, uh, quite frankly, playing around, seeing if a 22 would pop a hole in a windshield. It absolutely will. Yes. Okay, so what time are we? 11.45, we started this about a little before 8 this morning. Everything is looking perfect in every respect here. So, both briskets are kind of stalled uh, right about 157, which is fine. So, I'm going to turn the smoke off. And uh, basically, time to wrap. So, follow me inside, we'll get that going. Secret brisket wrapping. Once, like a package, flip it over, twice like a package, tucking the bottoms underneath. So, kind of give you guys a sort of bird's eye view here. Just gonna again we're doing it once very simply like a package we're not trying to make it airtight anything like that kind of tucking it up kind of taking the wrapping side Wrapping side down. I can't find the paper for sale anywhere. So I usually just go to the butcher and ask them for like 10 foot of it. And they've always been good. So, super cool about that. All right, this is the bigger side of the brisket. I'm telling you, that is purely recreational Christmas wrapping. Yeah. All right, back 
back in. We'll go a little one on top, big in on the bottom, 225 degrees till it feels perfect. Oh, so the Ransom's Bobcat Diesel mower. Um, I have the rings, I have the parts to rebuild the motor on this sitting in the house. They actually just came in, I ordered them months ago. This thing, uh, you guys probably haven't checked out the videos because I don't think anybody's watched them, but this thing's my nemesis, man. We, we uh, took it in, had the head rebuilt, had the valves lapped. Um, finally just could not get it running, did a compression test on it and found out it's got no compression. Uh, the reason for that, for you fellas who like to uh, jack the ether in these diesel motors, the reason for that was uh, the previous owners overheated it, so it was hard to start, and their solution for starting was just hit it with the ether, um, and quite frankly, it just blew the rings out of it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Kind of, I've always, I've always hated it when the guys start the tractors with ether and everything else. Um, I don't know, man, it's, it's just not good for a lot of these motors. I mean, I, I know there's people that'll say I've been doing it for 20 years and I, I, I get all that, we have too, I have been since I was a kid. Um, you, know, I, I, you know, I talked to Joe about this too. It's just, I consider him probably one of the smartest diesel guys I've ever met in my life and I've met a lot. Um, and you know, he'll tell you too, like some of these motors, too much ether will just fold the rings or fold the rods right up on them. So, uh, in this case, it shattered the rings, it just completely blew the rings out of it. So, uh, here might even be this weekend. This thing's actually getting picked up, put in the garage. I'm going to yank the motor out of it and start getting ready to rebuild that. Uh, which takes us to actually my favorite thing in the world. As funny as that might seem which is my beast. Uh, this is, this is uh, when I don't have the kids with me, this is my daily driver. Um, that it's, a, it's a 60s F100. I found this thing sitting on the side of the road, it said bad motor, question mark, make offer. Uh, so the guy could get it running. I didn't think it had a bad motor, he did. I'm not gonna lie, if you guys check out the videos, she smokes a little. Um, I put some heavier weight oil in it and that seemed to help a lot. But, that's that's that. Uh, so yeah, this is my knock around truck. I, I, I absolutely love this thing, man. I think it's just, it's just the coolest thing. I love the dents, I love the patina. Um, I do wanna put new wood in the back. It's got the original motor, it's got everything. So yeah, I, I just, Right now it needs a starter, which is why it's sitting here, but yeah, I just, uh, we'll just keep limping it along and uh, it is what it is, right? Uh, this is our 50s Massey. Um, it's our kind of our little tractor out here. Uh, I use it for brush hogging, um, kind of pulling stuff around the place. I don't know, it's just kind of a labor of love, you know, when I was a, when I was a kid, we had all these old tractors and everybody else bought new and we didn't. <laughs> so I, I think we were just kind of forced to keep them alive. So it's, it's a big part of where my affinity for, for all this stuff comes from. But um, as you probably, I don't know, if you watched some of the previous videos, I've, uh, I've actually spun the drive shaft out of this twice, um, using it to run the tiller. So, uh, I don't know, the, the beauty of this thing is I can split this tractor in half and have it back together in about 20 minutes. So, uh, they're a lot of fun. Um, I don't know what to say, man. It's, it's just, you turn the key and it starts. The thing just wants to run. I've always kind of loved it for that. All, All right. right. The infamous camo truck. Uh, it's 1982 F-250. Jill actually bought, the, she found this, I bought it for $800. Um, we just bought this to pull behind the RV because it doesn't weigh anything and it, the transfer case goes into neutral. Uh, so we uh, basically 
made, modified a uh, tow behind bracket so we could tow it behind the RV and then the doors from the 1992 silver truck went on the 1982 and yes I know if you look on the forums they don't fit except they fit perfectly I do have to change the trim over but they fit fine um, and then I gotta take the dash apart and rewire it uh, so we got power windows so that's that's on my to do project list um, I have a ton of stuff on my to-do project list. All right, into the barn for a couple fun things, the little, the little barn. Um, and then we'll uh, move on from there. But uh, just keep it up. All right, so I do in fact have a secret with this. I know it's painfully obvious when I hold the camera way up in the air, but from ground level, and from driving the truck, you don't 100% notice it, but somebody put a big smiley face on the hood. And I confess that I noticed that when we bought the truck for $800. What I didn't notice was the roof. So what is super, super funny about this. So we bought this truck and I'm, I'm driving it home. And for the first couple weeks we had it, every once in a while somebody would pull up next to us and giggle. And I could not, I mean, I did, it's an old junk truck. We paid $800 for it. As you guys have clearly seen, I have a passion for, for preserving things and bringing things back to life. I love it. Um, I love to see things get a second chance. I love to see them put back to work um, in as original condition as possible. And, and kind of my theory is, you know, it, it functioned just fine for 50 years, like, you could just put it back to original and get another 50 years out of it. But that said, after a couple weeks of people giggling one day, I'm cleaning off this truck. And as you probably notice, it's got a little rust on there. So I climbed up to the back of the truck to clean out these little gutters and, and put some new putty in them. And I finally discovered, I discovered the joke, if you will. And uh, the people that were selling it for $800 must have thought it was pretty funny when we drove out of the driveway. And I congratulate them because it was good. It was good. Here you go. Okay. Uh, that and there is my willies. It is... Um, so I have a CJ5 and I have a Wrangler that I built. Uh, the Willys, the Willys was on my on deck pile when I, I just, uh, I, I'll do it. I just had enough Jeeps for a little while. Um, I built a lot of Jeeps, had a lot of fun with it. I wish I'd videotaped it. We did some, we did some cool stuff with Jeeps. So uh, we did rip the horse stalls out of this barn. Um, sorry, I got everything open so you can get some light in here, but. Uh, so this is being converted to a shop and uh, that's where kind of all the work and everything happens and then um, take you around here and see it but that there is our parts opal so that's kind of the list of projects let's uh let's get back to cooking some brisket and uh Maybe having a recreational beverage or so. When this is done, that probe should just come, should just come in and out, should just like butter. That's what it kind of, it almost should feel just about like you're sticking the probe in butter. To me, that's when the brisket's done. All right, guys. Been waiting. It's about two thirty. See where we're at. Well. Yeah, we're not there. I don't know if you can see that, but see that one actually feels a little bit better. Yeah, the bottom one feels better than the top one, but it's still, 
a little bit of work to push that in. So it's about 315. Our temp still stuck right at 225, which is perfect. That feels good. Flat. Listen. I mean that's it goes in like butter. That's looking good. Yeah, the, the flat's still feeling pretty, pretty tough. So, uh, here's my big secret. Uh, one piece feels like it's done. One piece doesn't. So, I'll show you what I do. The cheapest, cruddiest yard sale cooler you can buy. And let me go get a towel. Nice. I was getting hot through that. Uh... Okay, so we're just uh, taking that whole thing out. Setting it right in the cooler. Um, it ain't about temperature. I don't even check the temperature. It's just about, it's just about the way the meat feels inside. Um, here, I'll, I'll do temperature just so you guys get a reading on it. So the temp I got was uh, 201 on it. But I will say this, I, I don't do the temperature at the end because Man, I've, I've had them stay at 185 for three hours and just be falling apart. And uh, I've had them get up to like 210. It's just that animal and how tough that connective tissue is and when it decides to caramelize. And no two animals are the same. They weren't on the same feed. They, you know, I don't know. One walked up and down hills, one didn't. So, uh, but that's it, 201. The flat still you can still feel some resistance it's still grabbing the, still grabbing the uh, thermometer on the way out so we're gonna give that some time so it's about 448 there we go there we go that's feeling right so we are ready to rock So, rest them for, we, we, I rest them for a couple hours. I just put them in this old cooler. I don't seal it up tight. And we'll be popping them open here in a little bit. Yeah, so, this, uh, we let this rest for about two hours. Um, so let's uh, pop this bad boy open. We're gonna come down here. Oh my god, that looks so good. Holy yeah, cow. It's gonna be so good. <laughs> my mouth is just watering. I mean, it's just don't, it's so, so tender. How does it taste? It's incredible. This is, this seriously is heavenly. All right. 
There you go. The best bun is the brioche bun. Bam!